Welcome back to Retro Wednesday. It's Ty Deerham here. This is Mike. And today I want to talk to you about the possible return of Mask. Will Hasbro ever make it? We're going to take a trip down memory lane with what Kenner did. Then we're going to see what little that Hasbro did. Then we're going to see what creators today are doing. A couple of few weeks ago, there was a little bump in the road for CFCB Unlimited. And we're going to talk about this situation. I did first hear about this from MattTracker.com. This is on the YouTube channel, so I am kind of using some of that information along with some other information that I got. We're gonna discuss this issue, but more over than that, I wanna see Mask return. I have some ideas, we're gonna talk about this some more, coming up. So back in the day, Kenner made the Kenner Mask line, and it is awesome. It is fantastic, so much fun to collect. And I did make a video talking about pretty much everything made in the Kinder Mask line. And this Series 1 is what everybody thinks of when they think of masks. Thunderhawk, Rhino, Gator, the Switchblade, Condor, all those. Very much so masks. If they ever reboot the Kinder Mask line, several of these vehicles will have to get made. And it kind of goes into would they make modern vehicles older vehicles, modern iterations of these vehicles, or would they just be super ultra classic? I think it has to be ultra classic using older vehicles. Series 2 is a little bit lesser known, but there's still some greats in there with the Stinger and all that, the Vampire, Firefly, Hurricane. So some great ones in there, some lesser great ones going on. Some I didn't even know existed until I started collecting this in the modern era. They also instituted a motorized auto transforming function in Volcano. Cool Series 2. I did do a review on all of these. Series 3 was sort of the racing series and some people still have a fondness for this and some people don't. But one thing about Vanessa was she's got her vehicle that was very popular and iconic in the show but we didn't get it till series three should have been in series one which kind of leads into where's gloria baker and where's her shark we're going to talk a little bit more about that in series four series four we actually got gloria baker but we did not get her shark we actually got stiletto it, it makes no sense what they did here these are some of the hardest ones to get and definitely hardest ones to get complete but still, they are fun and satisfying in a way. A lot of people don't like the split in two gimmick of the split second series, but I like it. I think it's kind of cool. But is it worth the money for tracking down the secondary market? Probably not. And if they reboot this line, these probably will never get made. If they did, it would be saved for something like HasLab or an online exclusive. They did make one playset, Boulder Hill. I did review this. I do like the playset, but I do feel like it is fragile in a way. It's not like it's going to break. It's as if it just doesn't hold together as well as it should. The way it's constructed, I would like a more solid one, a bigger one that you actually can fit the vehicles in. And there's a lot of creators out there that have made some really cool stuff, such as the energizing station, the table that they all sit at, they get their helmets energized, all that kind of stuff, and a lower level. So there's so much more that could be done if they make a Boulder Hill. In my opinion, the Boulder Hill could be improved more than, say, the Star Wars Death Star, the, they can improve that, but not as much as they can improve this. Blazer Command is its own Series 5. <laughs> I, I don't know what they would consider that, but itself, it is an interesting oddity where it does sort of blow up. I did review this thing also. I thought this thing was a sorry hunk of junk for over 10 years until I saw what it actually did, and then I was like, oh, I got to complete mine, and I got to go after it. So with that... This is pretty cool, but I never see this getting made again, and if they did, they could still make it and do better, but I doubt they'd have the electronics in it, or at least not the gimmick that this has. So this leaves collectors of masks scrounging through second-hand online auctions or digging through bins at toy shows trying to track these down. Now, it's a lot of fun to collect masks, and it's a lot of fun to buy some lots, get stuff cheap. But well, getting your stuff complete in good condition, decent condition, presentable condition is very hard and very expensive. Over time, picking a piece up here and there, it doesn't seem so bad. But if you try to go after it pretty hard, pretty fast, it's going to be very frustrating. You definitely need to take your time with it. But it would be so much more exciting getting to buy everything brand new again in the store or ordering them online. So now Hasbro has the license and what have they done with it since 1990s? 
three, one, whenever they acquired Kenner, this is what they've done. Literally one figure. And then they redid that figure slightly down the road. So when you look at this, they made a mat tracker. Now they made him look a little different than the original one. The helmet's different. He's got some sort of a chest pad and he's got a helicopter he never used in the show. But I think they just reused some of the tooling that that gun looks awfully familiar. And so with that, this is the 25th anniversary line. This was a $4.50 figure at Walmart back in 2008. And I do have one still on the card. I should, we should have picked an extra one up to open, but I was convinced this was a one and done and they would never go further with it. And to this day, I'm, I'm sadly, I'm right. They reissued them with a slight different deco of clothes and change of, I really don't understand how the character changed, but it doesn't bother me one way or another. It's just, they're reusing everything the same for the most part to make another figure instead of making a whole line. So this gets into the big question of what would happen if Hasbro went under, what would happen to his license? Well, a lot of people feel like the licenses of Hasbro's would go to a company that would actually do something with it, be productive with it, and, and would love to have the license. But since Hasbro's holding on tight to license and they're not doing anything with it, third party creators are stepping in and filling the gap. Now this is the Machina line from Ramen Toy. They're starting out with the Thunderhawk, but it's not the Thunderhawk, it's the Red Gullwing. And it is different enough and it has a different name, but it's similar enough with the Mad Hawkings and all that kind of stuff as the driver. Now, I think this is gonna be amazing. And when you get to rebooting a line or getting into a line, you have to have those big hits to be able to drive the interest and fund the next project, which is, of course, Something that's never been made before. And so this gets into the Great White, which was, it's very similar to Gloria Baker and her shark. The thing about this one is that this is a very complex design. And it's one of those things that I think that Kenner themselves knew they couldn't pull it off. That's why this didn't get made. That's why Gloria Baker got another vehicle, which was more simplistic in design than this, but not as iconic and was not in the show. This was in the show, but I don't think they could make this happen. A lot of creators have been trying to make this happen. Ramen Toy is going to make this happen. In fact, they're on their third version, if I understand that correctly. They're working out several small details, which I think it was decent where it was before in the first version, but now they're combining version one, version two, and version three is going to have sort of a combination of those. Anyway, Kenner couldn't do it. Ramen Toy will. Which leads us into Another company, person, individual group of people. Uh, this is CFCB, and they make six inch and 3.75 inch upscaled versions of Kenner's figures. Now, these are really cool, and I believe, I believe they're 3D printed and hand painted, but however they do it, they look fantastic. I don't have any of these, but I think I'm gonna start, I'm gonna tell you why I'm jumping into this pretty soon because I, it is exciting. They're a little more expensive because they're not mass produced. And so with that, I believe it's uh, 3.75 inch figures are $25. And then the six inch figures are 50 to $55. And then of course you pay shipping. And so with that, there's, I have some suggestions that, you know, if I were to start getting these, I would like to get a series of them at once and then save on shipping or something along those lines. But production doesn't really work for that. So I want to support this as much as I can and I'm excited for it, but let's see what they've got coming out. Right now, I think they're working on this Gloria Baker figure in the six inch, but they made her in the 3.75 inch and now in the six inch. Now this was a figure that never was made in Kenner and this is the kind of stuff that really gets me excited. I'm most excited when the creators are making stuff that never was made before. Maybe it's a prototype, maybe it's a, a, a character we just never got. But with this, I'm excited for this. This is a pretty exciting time and it's really good to jump in on this. The next thing they're gonna make in six inch, there's gonna be a Bruno Shepard, which that's gonna be pretty cool. And I'm really interested in seeing how they get the paint on that because that is some really interesting paint job that they did even back in the 80s. It was a pretty cool paint job with the tattoos and all that kind of stuff. So that's interesting right there. And then they're going to do, of course, they're going to do a Miles Mayhem. So all this stuff looks like a whole lot of fun and 
Uh, kind of excited to see what goes on in the six inch scale with this, but would you want to see modern representations that match the original or would you rather see a modern interpretation? Let me know in the comments below. It's just kind of interesting what the community would like. I think these have a lot of nice charm to them, but I haven't got my hands on them yet to actually check them out. Now, this is really a shock to the entire mass collecting community what Hasbro did. And at first it seemed quite sinister. And then after it happened, we kind of saw the aftermath wasn't really a big deal. But there was a cease and desist, a CND, sent to CFCB to stop using the logo, to stop using the mask logo. And everybody took it as that meant shut down production entirely. But it really just meant to rebrand and call it something else or whatever, and you can still make them. They're not mass producing these things, and this is really uh, a balancing act that Hasbro has to take. Because if they ever want to, if, if they ever want to make something in 2050, because it's nothing in the next couple of decades is planned, well, they want the, the collector community to not hate Hasbro over this situation, obviously. But then it it started to dawn on me and to make me think that maybe Hasbro does have plans. For the license sometime soon and if they did it would be awesome to see maybe a haslab do a wave of figures a few vehicles or whatever but hey do it at haslab if you don't think it's going to work at retail or maybe there will eventually be that that mythological movie come out so i'm actually happy to see cfcb is still going forward with making more figures and just taking the mask logo off of everything and more or less I think right now they're clearancing out anything that has that logo on it so that they can just get rid of it. And they did they did get the go to get rid of their stuff and to sell out of the stuff with that logo on it. So that's, that's cool of Hasbro to not put the hammer down, but just to say, hey, we do have the license and we're gonna enforce it. And that's just the way it is. And I'm glad CFCB can still make these figures. So I wanna end on the note that I've already kind of brought up, but would you like to see modern iterations of the characters and figures and vehicles? Now, I do believe that if Hasbro were to make new figures or a new line, it would not look like the original vintage. I don't think it looks so way out of left field as they did with the 25th anniversary and with the SCCC set. But I do think it would look more like these customs. Maybe not exactly like these customs, but more along the lines of modern iterations. These are modern figures customized to look like masks. And the gentleman by the name of Chris that makes these does excellent work. And he does them for pretty much any toy line that he likes. He turns them all into 3.75 inch figures or turns 3.75 inch figures into masks. Uh, I think he does cops and crooks and a whole bunch of other things out there. Really cool, great talent that he has. And for that, I really think this is something that Hasbro would look at to sort of copy and mimic in a way to make a new line. If they made a new line, I'd be all over it, of course, but could that really be why Hasbro had any sort of concerns or issues with CFCV that maybe they have something in the pipeline? Because I've never heard of them doing that before to anybody, but then again, it is their license, right? So personally, I'm excited for everything coming from these indie creators such as Ramen Toy and CFCB. I do hope that Hasbro eventually does something, but we're going to get what we get. And I am happy that there are actually creators out there working on this stuff. It's still around or it's turning out to be bigger than ever on the indie scene right here with these other toy makers. And so with that, I'm excited for the future. What do you think about this? Are you excited for this? And if Hasbro puts it out, would you support it? Or would it be dead at retail like Dungeons & Dragons? Let me know in the comments below. Like and subscribe. Because you're hanging around.